was a wonderful service. Uh, we have uh, the people enjoy the service. We have the pastor in the church, and we have Mr. Kalendo himself uh, preaching the gospel and telling the people to go out there and preach the gospel, winning more souls for Christ and believing in God as the Lord and their Savior. All right, yo, it's good to have you. Uh, we just came out of the church and we uh, attended the church for the first time and it was wonderful. I've never thought of seeing you preaching. And today we came to the church, we see you preaching to the people and even advising them to go into the world and preach the gospel to win more souls for Christ. That was wonderful. Uh, can you please tell us how this came about because a lot of people know you to be a politician they know you to be a business person but not much people get to know the Christian part of you how well you believe in God can you please let the people know it all started uh, being a child my father had wanted for me to rather be a medical doctor because I was a physician assistant but growing up I wanted to satisfy my father so much I wanted to be a doctor but I realized I could not stand blood uh, if somebody cuts themselves, I'm not brave to look at uh, so that particular wound. So I ended up finding myself, uh, I changed, I wanted to be, uh, my second year in college, at first I still went to college, wanted to be a medical doctor. And the second year I had to switch to engineering college. And in what day I love to dress, this day I was dressed up in coat suit and the professor said, I don't think you want to, because I see someone here in coat suits, uh, engineers do not wear coastal, so I said the man was speaking directly to me, so I said, oh, God, it. it was hard and drop. I had switched over to, I switched to uh, business college, and I did economics as my major. But in everything, I've only put God first, and then my wife, my mother would say, oh, I had dreams, this all dreams, this all me preaching. Every time I would say, hey, that's not my calling, that's not my passion. But after my friend got drowned, uh, it touched me greatly. And before that, as I said, with my preaching, uh, we used to have parties here almost every Sunday. We are all the beautiful, most of the beautiful girls from Morovia would track down here. The place used to be so packed. We were not praising God. It was like we were giving uh, uh, praises to the devil. They would come almost half naked, do you understand? So I decided after that event, hey, it's time to get closer to God. And I started preaching. Uh, my mother encouraged me to it. Then I have a wife who loves, uh, she's, she preaches also, but she goes to another church. And it's it's wonderful to know that you, you so much believe in Christ. Uh, how long have you given your life to Christ? Well, from the time I was born, really, regardless of even all the bad things with day, going clubbing, in the end, there were days sometimes you go to the club, you are drunk, you come in, and sometimes you want to get involved in an accident, and you know, and you I end up packing off the road. Uh, read the 25, uh, 25, uh, uh, 23rd Psalm, or sometimes recite the Lord's Prayer, sometimes sleep there, which was dangerous. I got involved in accidents on three different occasions. I got involved in real major accidents. Accident. Yeah, yeah, you understand? And all those three accidents, God protected Spare me and spared my life. So uh, I have changed after I start. Uh, I really, this is the second year since I started the preaching. I've changed greatly. I don't go hardly go to nightclub. It's been more than a year, you don't see me out, you understand? And I realize our life is more, we are more happier living our life than going to risk your life, going to a nightclub and getting drunk, and you're risking yourself to come home. And you could you could die. Thank you very much. I could see a lot of children yeah. around you, like it was said in the Bible that let little children come to me. I am surprised that you've got a lot of children coming to learn the Word of God from you. How are you able to achieve that? Uh, well, we, we started by going into the villages, talk, uh, into the village and talking to their uh, parents. I know you don't want to come to church, you can send the children. And we, we enthuse them also every day, like now they are coming to give each one of them 50 like grand down. To encourage and them to as encourage children. Them to come. But let me tell you the good thing. Those children get 50 dollars, then they keep 10 hours and come with it as collection. That is wonderful. That a child would think that, oh, I got 50 dollars, but let me keep 10 hours for my collection. So it's working greatly, and we are so, they have their own Sunday school. The church we are building out there, they'll have their own place. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That was Mr. Calando we've just spoken with, and it's gonna be wonderful. We're still gonna have more clips, and we're gonna be talking to the family. You get to see more about them. This is the man that you've been hearing about. Of course, a lot of tags on him. And he was on radio a few days back 
to call on the government's attention to the situation that happens at the radio station. And it was something else people thought it was anti-government. Yeah. But fortunately, God intervened in the situation. They caught the person that did the deal and now everybody can see clearly that Mr. Kalendo is a straightforward person. He's not who they thought he is. Thank you very much. Double, double, heavenly 
blessing na him I dey receive. Ah, yeah. God in your grace and mercy is always the follow me. Yeah. He has given me victory. Messi is always the follow. Yeah. Anthony George P. Kailundo Sr., President and Chief Executive Officer of Kailundo International Incorporated. That includes Kailundo Hotel, Kailundo Service Stations, Kailundo Petroleum, Kailundo Transport Service. We are in other lines of business like the microfinance. We have the Kailundo Microfinance. We also have Kailundo Associates Law Firm. As you know, I'm a lawyer. I'm a, I, under the British system, they call it barrister. So I have passion for that profession also. But first and foremost, uh, I'm more concerned about my business because I've done business for over 27 years. And as you can see, we have done what we can do. We own over 10 gas stations across Liberia. We have leased land to build additional five gas stations. We own our own radio and TV stations. So we hope this could be an opportunity where we see people who want to come and invest in Liberia and see how we all can partner to see, to move Liberia forward. got one of those speedboats over there and we've got more other on that side we've got this giant size and we've got smaller size over there this is the children's pool as you can see and this is adult pool on this side this is a compound where we used to fill up with a whole lot of Liberians and the foreigners coming to enjoy themselves but fortunately the man has given his life to Christ he's a man of God now people don't want to come around I guess many people don't like hearing the word of God but They've got to try to learn listening to the word of God. This is the second pool. We're going to the view of the sea. Like you can see, we've got another speedboat here. We've got another speedboat here. Then we've got another speedboat on this side. Then we've got little, little hogs where you can hang out, where we used to hang out when we have party here. Yeah, this is the snooker room, as you can see. It's not active because there are no events ongoing. You got a beach bike that you can ride and cruise around, you know, cruise around, have fun. Those are usually come around, have fun. We cruise bike, we move around, we feel at home, enjoy ourselves in Liberia. Of course, when you come to Liberia, Liberia is a place to be. All right, I am presently sitting with that man that everybody has been hearing about his name, 
but it's so fortunate that this man is an extraordinary simple man uh, we came into this compound and it's so unfortunate that we couldn't get no security with guns a whole calendar can you please tell us this name is an household name in Africa but we got into your compound no security with guns no security with radio communicating here and there we heard that you are a very difficult man, but we've seen the simplicity. Can you please tell us, who is this Kalando? Right. Trash Kalando, as you know, is a businessman, a liberal businessman. I've been in business for over 27 years. And let me tell you, I, I decided to be simple because knowing where I come from, I was not born, my parents were not poor, neither rich came from a middle class family and God blessing me I didn't see the need to want to live like the way the others when God blesses them the way how they make it look like they are better than others as a result when I moved into this neighborhood about three years ago uh, I welcome all of them and we all we started interacting most of the staff that work here the securities the securities all uh, are from the town, so I'm a people's person. And when things got robbed during the election, yeah, we had armed men. We wrote to the police. The police gave us six armed officers that were here for more than a month. And after that, I told them that here yeah, we felt everything was okay. So they should recall the officers, which they did. And we, as I said, to the dream of preaching. But in everything we do, I think the best character we have is Jesus Christ. Not you, 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 you've had, you've seen people with thousands of men, soldiers, and still people capture them. Oh yeah, people, oh yeah, you're right. People kill them. So every day of my life, I rather like to give my, I give my life to God. I lived here from the beginning of the war, from 1989 until the end of the war. Between that time, I went to the United States 16 times. Six times I decided I would live there permanently, but I always had that quiet voice. I said, "You go back home and go developed." So most of the things you see, my uh, gas stations, more especially when I, I started visiting Nigeria, I got inspired to have seen young Nigerians the way how they developed their country. It inspired me a whole lot to come and do similar things in Liberia. We discovered that you have over 10 gas stations and you have a lot of Liberian employed working under your establishment. Yeah. Can you please give us an overview of how many Liberians is under the employment of okay, your no, establishment? We are between, I'm sure, the former and former, between 150 to 200 employees. That wow. includes the securities. Because just securities within the country, we have over 50 securities just mined in our properties. But what we did, we have outsourced some to uh, one of my friends, Abi Kurma. He has his own security, pilot Agency. security, yeah, so, yeah. All right, uh, like, how many gas stations do you have Personal, within Liberia? Personally, we own 10 gas stations, but we have bought land for 10 additional gas stations. And we have the tanks, the pumps, and uh, to construct additional 10. Information reached us that uh, Kalando got angry and want to relocate because of the government of today. Uh, how true was that? Well, uh, I do not want to relocate, but I believe maybe I have reached my zenith in Liberia. I, as an African, like any other African country, African country is open to all of us, oh, yeah. especially West African countries. So I, there's this Ghanaian, he's my mentor, although he's far older than me. He owns about 18 different types of businesses in Ghana. He's president in Liberia. He owns the RAJ Hotel, the GM Bank, Liberia Enterprise and Finance Corporation. He owns that. So this is somebody that inspires me a whole lot. I want to see what I can do in other African countries as well. And so as a result, not only that, maybe the mistake I made for which I think people are envious of me was to have put my name on almost most the of the businesses. And I intentionally did it because 
I wanted my name to be a brand. You understand? And he has paid up because we started back in 1991. And between that time and now, God has blessed us tremendously. What I'm concerned about, how do we make this country prosper more? How do I provide more jobs? How do I help to impact or change the life of some other citizen or some other person from anywhere in the world? If you go to my office, well, I do not only have Liberians working for me, I also have Indians, I have Pakistanis working for me too. And they make me relax, uh, they do their job, they send the report via email, I go through them, so I can stay anywhere in the world and still monitor my businesses in Liberia. Oh, yeah, that's maybe wonderful. it will help me greatly. Uh, maybe take some vacation off for two, three months, go and rest. Maybe my name will be <laughs> up <Your brother>. there. <laughs> but it's sad because in the <laughs> next uh, one month, I, I've been constructing uh, a four-story, no, a four-story wow. building that's going to be branded Kailondo Plaza. Again, and so they're going to say all type of things when, <laughs> uh, when they see the glasses of that building, because uh, I think you compare that building to MP Liberia. Wow, and that's, that's the type of uh, 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 constructive jealousy I have within me. I like to envy good products, good products, good brands, brands that made by multi-million companies, you understand? Then I, as an individual, go for it and try to make sure I succeed in doing it. You hear? You know, it's sad that the whole thing about this envy, you know, when it started, not only even before uh, I got into politics, there was a time when I opened a travel agency that was in 1994. I, have, I went to the U.S. in 1994. Study about travel agency came and opened. They were very young, very tiny, but very, very aggressive. And we only had three travel agencies in the Republic the of Liberia. And being very young, very energetic, that's why before our president became uh, the world best, I took them almost everywhere until we almost qualified to go to the World Cup. It was my travel agency, carried on the travel and tours that took the team, the national team, the Lone Star, to every country that they went. We qualified two times to go to the African Cup of Nations and once we almost went to the World Cup. So I have been working, and I continue to work. But now I'm so thankful to God, my son is out of college, so he's helping me. My wife is highly educated, she's helping me. I had to bring them in, because finding, finding reliable people to work for you also in our country is very, very difficult. People can't work for you, they want to be like you overnight, they want to own everything. In fact, they want to own more than what you own. <laughs> yeah. They can't work for you, they want to own we, everything overnight. We got into your company and, and discover that it's a very big mansion and we want to know this mansion is something worth 500,000, 3 million or it's what can we quantify three, I think, it to I think, I think, I think we spend up to 2.5 million in building everything. United yeah, States dollars. Yeah, United States dollars, including my boats. I have five boats. The boats alone, we, excluding the boats, the boats like this one alone, this one cost me 100,000 US dollars. Wow. It has a room, it has a kitchen, it has a living room. Then it. Then here's this one. In. Then I have four other private boats. You understand? And my fleet of cars, this costs like 700,000, 750,000 US dollars. I have a Mercedes Audi like 750,000 US dollars. I have a Jaguar that's gone to service. It cost me 75,000. So you see why the envy, most of the guys, they wonder how do you go, but hell, I want to go to the bank to talk to any banker about loan. I don't ask you for less than 1.5 million. Because of the kind of business you are into. The businesses I do, and sometimes, uh, like, I just secured 1.7 million that I'm, I will pay in 90 days. That's the type of money Mis we turn around. In 90 days, you play 1.5 million, and you deposit it, you go for another 1.5 million. In fact, I used to be, when my friend was alive, I remember there was this that uh, in 90 days they gave me 6.5 million and they would pay in 6.5 uh, 6 million in 90 days. Wow, so, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that had a confidence built. Before Dan died, in one year we paid 14.8 million United States dollar business. And you were able to pay within We the paid. Time. You understand? And, and that's, the, that's the key. That's the key to wanting to be a successful businessman. If nobody can, you cannot succeed in doing business without the banks. Just like Donald Trump. In fact, he filed for bankruptcy three times. But today, he's, it's a matter, matter billion. <laughs> so, if, yeah. if we ask you, what are the three major things that you think retain you in business as a successful man? Just three major words. 
first and foremost is having faith in God. That's the first and foremost. Second, uh, being focused and being truthful to yourself and your business. Uh, being truthful, there are people who go take more and they run away. Just like this, the small church, we gave 200,000 Lebron hours to start people up. 10,000 Lebron hours, today they were supposed to pay. Starting with the pastor, since he took the money, it's been three, more than one month, he stopped coming to church. For 10,000 Lebron dollars, that's less than 100 US dollars. Back again with the one and only, the most talk about George Calando. Yeah. Good day, sir. Thank you. As a female, being gender sensitive, how many female staff do you have? Mm, personally, uh, first of all, I believe in more. When it comes to my interior positions, I believe in women. Uh, I realize that men are very, 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 very uh, envious. Mm -hmm. You employ men who come to your institution and want to be like you overnight. Yes. Women have learned to trust more women because they have some part of their heart they feel for you. Mm -hmm. Although there are some that are criminals also, mm -hmm. we have some of them that are criminals, so we, get, we, we dismiss them. But on the average, women are more reliable when it comes to my dearest case than men. Sure. Yeah, so we got, as I speak, I think we have about 50 women within our employ. Hi, my name is Priscilla Abram Cooper, um, the Managing Director of Executive Inc., a hotel to the register in the Republic of Liberia, and it's owned by attorney George B. Kalano Sr. Um, Mr. Kalano is a God-fearing person. He's one of the biggest business tycoons in Liberia. He's a family man, and you know, I like to look at him like a simple person because he's down to earth. And he has provided jobs for the ordinary librarians, you know, far and near in the city because he has businesses um, almost all over Liberia and he has hundreds of, of employees. If a typical librarian man is trying to make it, we, instead of, you know, riding around and help him or her to grow, we fight to bring them down. It's like the crab mentality, you know, when, when, when you have crab, you know, in, in a little a bucket or pan or whatever, and one of, you see one of the crabs try to go up, the all of the rest of them will try to pull them, pull, you know, that particular one down. That's how it is in Liberia. We, we, we don't, you know, support each other. We like to support the, the foreigners, you know. Even if you, if you, from the sub-region, Maybe Af Aricos, Ghana, Nigeria, the support they will give, they will give the man that is outside. It won't be equal to what they're going to give, you know, our fellow, uh, uh, fellow Africans. You know, and that's, that's one of the reasons I think Liberia hasn't grown to where we want it to be yet. So we need to change our mindset. Mr. Kalano is, Attorney Kalano rather, is strong. And because he has God, that is why, you know, that is why he's been going, moving from one place to the other. Because I tell you, I don't have the heart he has. Had it been me, I think God forbid I would have died from heart attack. Because when you sit here, one minute you hear, you know, something scandalous on your name and people just run with it, whether, whether it's true or not. Liberians wouldn't want to get up tomorrow and see that, oh, you know, something tragic has happened to this person. If you are succeeding, no one's going to get the news. But the, the least evil thing that's going to come up for you would be, you know, whether, you, whether they're going to get money or whatever, they, they're running with the issue. They, nobody got time. They just want to see each other hurting. And he's a strong man. And he's God-fearing. The, the evil things that they say about him, you don't have an ounce of truth in him. Anybody who know him from, from, from in depth will tell you that he will give the last quote on his back to help his fellow men. That's the kind of person he is.
Oh, my name is Miss Asaku Fofana. I'm the manager for Kalame Gas Station opposite 540. I have close to 11 persons working with me, two girls, nine boys. Uh, we are satisfied with our salary. We take pay on time. We does not have problem with our salary. So we say thank you to Kalame Group of Company. This is Tower Hill of Magibi County. The CEO for the era is George, George B. Kalano. So in this station alone, you have like four to five people operating here, right? Sure. And are the, the five people, are they being paid by the management? Yes. Working with Kalando Petro Station, uh, do you like it or you don't like it? I like it. I uh, there like are so it. many bad names, bad thoughts about Kalando himself. Uh, does it affect you? Does it bother you? Mm, yeah, most of the time it bothers me. But what do you see your boss to be? A good person or a bad person? Good person. How good is he? He talks to people nicely, you know. Every time he can talk to the customer. Yeah. So my name is Eric Morris. I uh, work with the Galano Petroleum Company and I'm the supervisor for this central office, Congo Town Opposite SOS. I've been working here for more than three years and I have about 15 staff. I sound here, but five drivers, four pump attendants, four security and a janitor. And we work here together with a very cordial relationship. Yeah, I worked with Kalando for more than three years and my experience, although there have been some ups and downs, but I have not experienced anything like salary delay or cutting down salary or other stuff, but I believe that Kalando is a humble man. He has a good working relationship. Because over the years I've been working with him, I've studied with him, I've been with him throughout, and I've not experienced anything like salary delay or what have you. We are presently at the headquarters of Kalando Petro Station, and we're going to be speaking with one of the attendants to tell us about the services and the working relationship with Kalando. Management. Uh, could you please introduce yourself? Um, my name is Wilfred Barkley, uh, working at Kalando Gas Station, SOS Congoton Headquarters. SOS Congoton Headquarters. How long have you been working here? Um, this is my, my, my third month. This is your third month? Yeah. Okay, within the third three months you've worked here, uh, what has the relationship been with the management? Do you have problem with the management? Well, probably nothing like any problem because from the time of course, we, we took over together. This is the new management. We took over together. I didn't meet the old management, but from a previous month of the, two, of the new manager, there is no problem. Have they been going you? Do they delay your payments? No, actually, they pay me on time. Okay, so what can you say about Kalando gas station? Um, very, a very good gas station. Of course, the man himself is very good man. Despite the, 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 the whatever thing people can say about him, everybody has their own character. But for me, for my past three months with Kalando, I always get my salary on time. Make sure every in the morning when I come, the work, when he comes in the morning, receiving the work, talk to me well, call me in the office, say, my man, you have to hold the job with your two hands. Nothing to scare up, nothing, nothing to do. Just focus on the job, make sure you're honest. One day you also become manager as a way that the young man become manager. all the way to 1989. No one could say anything about me. I remember I used to sell cigarettes for my sister-in-law. She was working. She was working at uh, the Roberts International Airport. She would bring the cigarette for the duty free. No one knew me. I would go to the market with the bag hanging. And no later, I slept on the floor. 
I used to spread the bed sheet on the floor to sleep. I used to tutor children for one hour a month. I had 30 students that had started earning a living. That was how I started paying myself. For over one year, I tutor people children. I have five different areas I went. Some areas you have five children, some places four, some children one on one. And I will generate like 30 hours at the end of every month. I rode bus for more than four years. And no one said nothing about me, but I went God when I opened my business in 19... We already started this morning in 1994. But when we opened, when I went to the U.S. and came and opened the Kailondo Travel Agency, we were booming. People were happy at first. Until all the way walking, nobody had time for me to stay. I was friendly with all the fashions. 2003, the devil fooled me. I went to a phone party. I go put myself into politics and when my wahala starts. And when people start saying all oh, type of thing about me, how me and my former rebel, I fought for Prince Johnson. Nobody said nothing about me all the time, you understand? But by the time they saw me now, I was part of the formation of this force, group of young men who believe in uh, the president today, that he was the best person to uh, lead this country, that when my wahala started. Then people started running propaganda between, which is not part of my life, to gain favor. Who oh, you see that here? This is what John can say about you. This is what John can say about you. And it's sad. So some of the things I look for for myself. If blah blah continue 2010 now. The money alone I've spent on Western on politics, I would have paid additional 10 gas station. Today I would have been only more than 20 gas stations in all the other counties because I have the land. I have additional five land I have not constructed nothing on, but I have everything. That money I have wasted. If I just did go and lecture, it was enough to pay the other, complete the other five gas stations. But this is what life is. And they come with challenges. The more you are blessed, the more challenges you have. But I think it is not late. I've taken the right decision to go back to preach the word and leave politics and watch my life. Watch. Although even after leaving politics, people are still after me saying, all oh, the worst things, I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking God to be here. You're pretty me. I'm not involved in politics. I told who will be the next president here. Yeah, who? I, I don't care. All I want is for Liberia to prosper under George Weir. This is uh, Steven. Yeah! This is. Tell him what your name is. Your name is Steven Calando. And your name is. Jadwis Calando. These are children of Calando. And uh, we are on the sea now with the speedboats. We're having a ride. And it's going to be wonderful. Yeah, this is the children's side. Yeah, I'm going to be with the boss now. We're going upstairs on the second deck to be with the CEO. I remain Osmani all the way from Capsule TV in Nigeria and we are here in Liberia in the heart of Morovia with that man, George Colombo, the CEO of so many offices, so many companies, an employee, an employer. He is self-employed. So nobody employs him. 
for here for is a lot of Liberians. He has given jobs to a lot of Liberians and he's still giving jobs to a lot of Liberians and he's still creating more jobs for the Liberians and not just for the Liberians alone. His dream is big. His dream is for the African continent to be one of the best place to visit. And guess what? This is the same speedboat that has that big top that somebody died on it. And so fortunate we are riding on the same speedboat now. As you can see, we are all wearing our security safety jackets. Like you can see, the pilot is with a safety jacket. You can see our female presenter here. She's wearing a safety jacket. Even the camera crew behind, see the people behind, behind the camera, the people behind there, they are still wearing a safety jacket. And when we're talking about safety jacket, it is what is recommended for everybody that is going on the sea. We have it on there, and we all have it. We're having a pleasure ride. It's fun. It's fun to be here. It's safety to be here. And when you're talking about that, man, Judge Galeno, you need to get close. You need to get to know him. You need to get close to him. You need to get to define who he really is. And uh, it's no one else but the CEO. And he's riding up. Can you please let them know who's riding? Who's riding? Tell them who's riding us. I'm about to judge me, Kailuno, Sylvia. The sad when my friend got drowned, somebody that helped me transform all my businesses. Our own people try to make me look like a demon. Somebody who in just one year could go up to 10.8 million United dollars on our decks. For people to make it look like I wish even for him. But you know, it's sad. Now, in Africa, West Virginia and Liberia, people just wish to see the downfall of each other. You know, there were times when things were tough. And there was a time I wanted to uh, sell brand new cars. I went to my friend, the late down Oregon. Now I told me, George, this is not a good venture. Okay. Put your money into it. But when he realized that I got into the oil business, he was so happy. He supported me. So, it's sad, but may his soul rest in peace. I've always about the day when me and the Just family will be friends to get it know that Dan was a brother. Yeah. Uh, this same boat was the same boat the we all piloted and this boat is so simple to pilot it's like you're driving an Noah. automatic car. All you do is to press the speed and it, it moves by itself. It can move like that. It will move. All you do Make sure the boat is in the center of the water because of the deepness, the understand of the engine. But it's so simple for someone to take the thing that you want to harm. Uh, a friend of yours that helped you greatly in life. In the sad. But this is Africa. I know envy and jealousy is all over. But our country is worse, more especially when you God has blessed you. We just wish to see the worst about you. Uh, I still consider myself a friend of the Oregon family in Nigeria. I look forward to that day when we all will be friends. There are so many days I went to their house, the wife cook. They always sit there, drink, enjoy, play music, watch. You know, my friends to love African music a whole lot. African movies, I want them to watch the movies. Let's go on there, most of them go to the nightclub. God gives life and God takes away life. Uh, I know you are so shady the place we are. How, how real is this gold? Are they like how many carat gold is this? This is 18 carat gold with diamonds all engraved on it. This and this diamonds, is diamonds, diamonds also. This is okay, gold, gold, gold. This is gold. gold yeah. I have so many. 
But this you, you you're putting on if we wait if we rate it is it right now up to is it up right to now, one thousand dollar two thousand dollar like I'm wearing over sixty thousand US dollars. Wow. My fingers, the watch, everything, yeah. Sixty thousand US, US dollars. dollars. Yeah. That's a lot. Okay, this is the GPS. The GPS. And this is the oil gauge. Oil gauge. This is the battery gauge. This is the speedometer. This is the, the speedometer. Yeah. This is the depth. The is the depth. This is the depth. It gives you the, the depth, depth of the of the of the of the, of the sea. Yeah. Uh, this is the. This is how flat the boat is. The, oh. The level of which the boat is. Oh, that's wonderful. And this is the speedometer. This is the speedometer. Uh, revolution per inch. And this is the temperature. Water gauge. This is the water gauge and temperature. Is the, uh, this is the fuel gauge. So you can see this is not just an. And this is the uh the the offshore, offshore, offshore what? Offshore, this is the offshore baby. It tells you where we are. Offshore the world, are we? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I mean. This is not just any kind of speedboat. This is a professional, professional speedboat that, of course, is being piloted by professional as well. And even if you don't know how to uh, pilot it, you don't know how to ride on this, you can learn it because it's automatic and it has everything uh, digital. It's a digital speedboat with everything on it. It gives you the direction of where you are, how you are, and how you can go for it. Wonderful one. We had a good ride. We went straight to the bridge and we're going back to Kalendo's uh, house. We'll be having an overview of the resort around. You can get to see Barracuda Resort, how, how the environment is and how welcoming it is. This is a very good ride that we had. Enjoy the ride. Thanks for watching. Days of my life, I praise you. Everything that I have now, you gave to me, Baba. Lord, I say for your love, I'm great. Oh, yes, you love me plenty. You came to die for me, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi. I am better. Ooh, oh, yeah. I search around. There's no one else like you.